Welcome back to Bootleg Opinions, and guess what y'all, I am doing this by myself, because why? There is no way I am doing 42 looks with another guest, because we'll be sitting here till next Christmas. Bootleg Opinions. Who needs a guest when I got me, myself, and I? Now, episode three, I feel like it's the actual premiere, because I feel like the first episode and the second episode, although it was, like, technically the premiere, I feel like it was a teaser for the episode. Now, this is the ball, and I feel like this is a way to really show three looks that shows who you are. Two looks that you can bring from home, so you have time to prepare, so let's see what you have done. And the third look is something you make in the workroom, so it shows how technical you are as a person and how skilled you are as a seamstress. And in this episode, we'll be talking about the three categories, which is Mother Goose, significant mother, and call me mother slash father. First category is Mother Goose. First up is Dawn, serving her animalistic look, mixing it with drag. And this is just so horror and beautiful at the same time. The makeup is so spectacular. It is out of this world. And it's great that she has the white makeup to blend into her body, which is the white fur. This is a fabulous look. Next up is Q. When she walked out, I gasped. We saw the moon on the head. It is gigantic and stone for the gods. The dress, it is beautiful as well. This material just shines spectacularly on her. This is kind of giving me like a very holy at the same time. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but like when you go to church, this is kind of what you get, right? The embellishment of the gold is great to contrast against the black. And then at the bottom of the dress, we see this poof that's just coming out. It gives her a great shape. This is a great look. Next up is Sophia Crystal. I screamed, y'all. When she first came out, the entire bar screamed along with me. This is so grand, so fabulous. It's giving kind of almost all-stars drag too because she comes out looking like money. This is drag, baby. It is so exaggerated. The details of the pumpkin, plus when she was walking out, we see the root of the pumpkin crawling out with her. And this is what I love about when I see a look like this, is that you are not just wearing a pumpkin dress. You are the pumpkin. You are more than just the outfit that you put on your body because you are embodying everything that you are showing on that stage. Great job, Safira. I would totally wear this look. To wear, I don't know yet. Next up is a mandatory meeting. Love the girl, but this look was just all over the place. I like the look separately. I like the top with the cast when she opens, right? I also enjoy the blue outfit that she has underneath, but together, they just don't mesh well. But overall, but overall, her look, but overall, her mug is mug. But overall, there is improvement with her mug compared to, <laughs> but overall, there is, but overall, there is improvement with her mug from last week. Next up is Mirage, and this is so beautiful and cute and very Gen Z. I like the ears, that was a great addition to the look. And then as we go down, although it is just a two-piece, she added some of the hand pieces that drags it up. Plus the furry boots help connect the whole look together. I would say that overall, this is a safe look. Next up is Tsunami Muse, and she is serving you Humpty Dumpty. Now, I feel like this should have been her reveal look because her reveal look wasn't that special in the first episode that I saw her. But in this one, it's definitely serving reveal, right? Because there's a story that goes from part A to part B with a dramatic effect. But if she wore this, who knows what she would have worn on the other episode, right? But anyway, when she first comes out, we see her in this glamorized egg with a little mermaid skirt at the bottom. Great addition. So she's not just an egg, but she is also egg and fashion. And then she does a reveal. Bam! I guess in a way, this is almost like a play of Mother Goose, like Mother Goose Child as an egg, but someone murdered her and now it's being fried on the pan. Anyway, I love this look. This was so beautifully done. Next up is Morphine. She looks gorgeous, but I feel like I've seen so many made outfits and this material that when I see something like this, I associate with Party City, Halloween Store, when you buy the latex outfits from a bag, right? Probably not, but in this case, um, it does kind of give me that feeling. It's fitted to her body, but what threw me off are the stockings. I felt like they were too harsh. I would have liked them to be sheer, or if they were that material, I would have liked them shorter because there was just no differentiation from the dress to the stockings. So I would like them shorter so that there's some legs because I feel like now it's just going from stocking straight into the dress and it just looks very bold. But overall, this is a safe look. Next up is Nymphia and baby, she is serving you blue. And I feel like, spoiler alert, she won by the way. And I feel like she finally got her win, although she didn't get it last week, but she finally got it and she won $5,000. 
This look, although it can be as very costumey because we have seen this look before, but the way that she used her materials and the way that she dragged it up really helped serve it as a costume look for the runway. I enjoy the full feathers at the top. The wig is a little bit questionable, not gonna lie, but the outfit itself, it's great. She customized these shoes to match the entire look. I like the different shades of blue on this outfit. This is a great look for Nymphia. Next up is Megami, and this is no good. It looks like something you make in the workroom. She walks out, it looks shredded, doesn't look complete. I like the muck though, I thought that it was really pretty that she did something different over here. I like the hair too, but yeah. The dress, like different patterns and styles, and then as we go down, we see the hoop, and then... It's just like, where's the rest of the outfit? And then the uneven... Fishnets, I don't know, it was all over the place, but we love our New York City sister. Next up is plain Jane, and there's nothing plain about this Jane. At a first glance, I saw the animalistic makeup, and I enjoyed the fact that she did something different over here. This color is beautiful on her, and it fits her gorgeously. Though I do wish the bottom of the dress would have extended even longer so that it creates a little more of a dramatic effect on the runway, because the camera sometimes does pull out from the side, and when the queens walk and we see that train just trailing in back of them, I always find that very beautiful and dramatic and very soothing to the eye. But the length is not bad. This is gorgeous on her. Next up is Plasma, and she's serving you camp! And this is so well done, because sometimes camp can't go wrong? Nina West. <laughs> Sorry, I took that back, I was just kidding. But anyway, um, this look is cute, this is so well done. The color coordination of the light blue and light pink together throughout the entire outfit. And this was so special, and I especially love the additional person that she has added onto her outfit. This is very well done. Great job, Plasma. Plasma! Next up is Maya, and this is just terrible. She comes out, couldn't see her face, too much going on. There's too much clutter at the top. The silver doesn't make sense. It just seems like she added the silver shine over there to hide the edges of the feathers. But I will give her credit for doing yellow makeup to match the dress. And then as we go down, um... There was like five feathers over there. I don't know. This dress is not it. Next up is Hershey, and you know who will wear this dress? Miss Honey Davenport. Zzz. Now, when she first comes out, I thought to myself, beautiful, gorgeous, drag. Wasn't really expecting that from you after watching the first episode. But this is so glamorous, this is so drag, this is giving me ball, like not just like drag race ball, but also like pose ball. The short hair really does work well with this look because she does have the fur around her neck. And then we see the yellow and black pattern throughout the entire dress. This fits her beautifully. This is a great look. Last up is Geneva in this Mother Goose runway. And uh, cute color, but I feel like there was a lot going on. And I do see the idea. It's just some things I would have changed to execute this look a little bit more. The hat is cute, but I would have pushed the hair to the back or tied it and make a little bun. Because I always feel like we can also manipulate the characters to fit our drag characters so that it's presentable on the runway. Then we would have seen her beautiful necklace the gorgeous shoulders, plus her beautiful face. Then it wouldn't seem like there's so much going on over here because we got the hair, we got the hat that's like down to here, and then we got the shoulders, we got a necklace. Ah! The gloves are a cute addition to this dress, but what I would have done with the train that she has attached to her waist is to make it longer so that there's weight on the dress because I feel like when we see it here, it's kind of shifting. It's kind of like uneven because there's nothing to weigh it down. If it was longer, it would have trailed in back of her and instead of it being shifted to the side and looking wonky, it would have been in the center. Before we continue with the episode, let me share with you the sponsor for this week, BetterHelp. BetterHelp offers therapists who are trained to listen and help you. It is 2024. A new year, a new you. Do you feel like you can be a better version of yourself but you don't know where to start? I myself have that problem too. Although I am a queen that looks very confident on the outside, but there are days that I feel depressed, anxious, and very overwhelmed. So, I use BetterHelp. All you have to do is fill out a questionnaire to help access your specific needs, and then you get matched with a therapist in most cases under 48 hours. BetterHelp has a broad range of expertise within their network that gives you access to help that may not be available in your area. You can talk to a therapist in an online environment at your convenience. They have video and phone sessions available. Plus, you can send unlimited messages with your therapist. Join the 3 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with a better health therapist. So, what are you waiting for? Sasha your way to the link in the description and use my code to get 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. 
Next category is significant mother, aka Mama You. Just kidding! First up, we have Dawn Baby serving you breakfast at Tiffany's. Now, the film Breakfast at Tiffany has a very iconic, legendary look. And Dawn over here has made it very sexy and very her own. When she first comes out, I immediately got it. And I do have to give her props for making it sexy and her own. And she has a little bit of skin exposure and the dress is at the right length. This is a cool look. Next up is Q serving you Judy Garland. Now, this is gorgeously done. It's almost like a replica of the original look too. And I don't know if y'all noticed or not, when she has the microphone and she was pretending to sing, that court was going all the way to the back of the stage. Beautifully done, Q. Very good job. Next up is Safira Cristal serving you Eve. And I know some of y'all are thinking, well, it's just a nude illusion, but let me explain. Because that's completely stoned, we got the leaves placed on the tatas and the hoo-ha, and she spray painted this entire bodysuit to carve out her body. And the additional thing that she added on to make this look extravagant is the beautifully long hair that was just touching the stage. She is giving you drag, baby, and I am loving it. We got the body cinch, and because, you know, most queens don't really wear hip pads or breastplates anymore, so it's good to see it back on TV. So... Great job, Safira. Next up is a mandatory meeting. Do I like the look? Not really. It could have been a little bit more polished, but I like the camp aspect of it. She goes from one Michelle Visage to another version of Michelle Visage. The first look was bad, but you know. The second look was bad too, but it's something Michelle would wear too. But anyway, did y'all like the look? Let me know in the comments. Next up is Mirage. What I do enjoy is that she made it her own. She took this bodysuit with the spray paint, although it's not as good as Safira's, but it's there. I enjoy this beautiful long hair that she has in the back of her, plus the hair details that she has around the nude illusions that's just swirling around her, baby. But I would have moved one piece a little bit more to the center so it covers her hoo-ha a little bit more. But nonetheless, this is a beautiful look. Next up is Tsunami Muse, and she's paying tribute to Candy Muse. And what a great way to pay tribute to someone you enjoy and love. She did the signature dead that Candy Muse did, plus she has the boom box with her when she walked out on the runway. The different shades of the blue are great, but the shoes I would have done denim, but I give it a pass. I see what she's trying to do over here. She's trying to match the blue with the blue outfit that she has on. But I think that if she can't find the exact shade of blue to match the outfit, I would have just done nude shoes. Next up is Morphine, and probably not the case, but it seems like something she found in the closet and she wore it and she was like, I'm gonna do Kris Jenner. I don't know. This is a top, a bra, pants, and shoes. I guess it works, but not having an orgasm. Next up is Nymphia serving you Angelina Jolie. Now, when she first comes out, I don't know if y'all know who Coco Lee is, but she is giving me very Coco Lee vibes. R.I.P. Coco Lee, we love you, by the way. Her face, her hair color, the aesthetic, the way she walks, oh, just gorgeous. The matching earrings, the piece on the center, to the side of her dress, great. Although from the front, it is just a white dress, but the back, there was a lot of art included. And she walked down that runway beautifully and she made that dress work, baby. Next up is Megami. I get it, it's a reference to Lady Gaga and it's a look that Lady Gaga has worn. But out of all the looks that Lady Gaga has done over the years, I would have probably picked something else. Um, the hair was a no for me. I feel like it could have been fuller, more voluminous, because they are in drag. Um... Um, hell no. <laughs> Sorry. Next up is Plain Jane. And again, there's nothing plain about her because she's giving you camp on the runway. This is a fun and safe look. It shows that she's not scared to have fun, make a fool of herself, and on top of that, it is a clean look. Next up is Plasma, serving you Anne Boylan. I almost said, what's that person that sings? Susan Boyle, never mind. Anyway, she looks really good here. One thing I would have done over here is I would have made the hair a little bit more voluminous in the front. We do have to remember that we're drag entertainers and that we have to give drag, right? Although they are doing a reference and an inspiration to the original look, we can manipulate and change a few things here and there. And I think that with some volume over here, it would have amplified the look even more. And I also enjoy the fact that she lined the sleeves so that when she does this, we see the pattern inside that matches the bottom of her dress. So, great look. Next up is Maya, and I thought this look was okay. I didn't hate it. I liked it. I thought it was okay. Yeah, it was okay. Did y'all like it? It was okay. We see this green fur coat that's lined. Yes, I do look for those things. The green shoes, the panties, the top, and the glasses to match her selling it with the microphone. 
dancing, doing the dance moves. What I would have done is come up with the glasses, hold on the microphone, and then at one point during the runway, take them off and reveal your eyes. Plus, I would have brought the top a little bit low too, because as I'm looking over here, it looks a little bit questionable. It seems like it has come on top of the breast. I don't know. I like this look though. Next up is Hershey, and this is a mess. The hair was no good. She comes out in this latex blue material. It was a blue dress. Ta-da! No, I'm sorry. No. Next up is Geneva serving you Selma Hayek. And I can see the judge's perspective and critiques about how it doesn't really read as Selma Hayek because when I think of Selma Hayek, I think of maybe it's just me, mostly as like a very independent, very dominant, very strong, very courageous and brave woman, right? I think of her as someone that wears like a tux, a black blazer, dress shirt, black pants, very CEO and someone that's in charge, but I don't hate the look. I think she did well in this look. She looks safe. But what I would have done is taken the pants even longer to cover the shoes or have matching shoes to cover the edges of the pants. And last category is call me mama you. Just kidding. It's actually call me mother slash father. How homophobic. Anyway, we first up have Dawn who's looking absolutely stunning. We got the signature elf ears. We got this pop of color for the earrings. And then we see her playing with straps that takes it all the way down to her shoe. And also she has this dramatic coat that she has trailing in back of her when she was walking back. This is a great look. Next up is Q and she's serving you fashion, honey. She's serving you fashion and see fashion, honey. I love this look. First of all, this piece in the back, it's so dramatic, it is so grand. It is something a queen would definitely wear. She has the right hair on, and I do mention all the time on bootleg opinions is that when you have something in the back of you, you should always adjust your hair to match the look. And she did just that. Q is a fierce seamstress and a fierce designer, and I would love to see how she would have done if she was given more time. Because, you know, how Drag Race is, you're given a limited of time, so you create this, right? But I think that this is so great already, so I wanna see what she would have created if she has two more days. But anyway, great job, Q. Next up is Safira, baby. Now, this is, again, drag, baby. When I first saw this, this was so adorable that it was giving me the little minions. Little minions? Something like that. But, um, this is not a read, by the way. It's a compliment because this is so adorable and drag at the same time, too. She has the touch of the blue earrings to match the outfit. And also on top of that, the nails are blue, too. She took the sleeves all the way to her hands and this dress just poops out beautifully. Imagine her didn't adding that additional material on the inside. It would have just been like a really boring dress, right? But the fact that she added the volume in there really drags it up. This is a great look for a great queen. Great job, Safira. Next, next up is a mandatory meeting. Do I like the look? No. It's all over the place again. And also I feel like in some places it doesn't feel complete. The hair, it's okay. The makeup, it's cool. The dress is just so ugly. Like, why would you pick that color? Anyway. <laughs> okay. The top over here, I give it a pass, but I think what really ruined it was that gray on top of it. And the bottom with those colors coming out, it's a no. She looks like she's wearing the outfit inside out. Or am I the only one that guessed that? Anyway, I'm sorry, Amanda. Love you, though. Next up is Mirage, looking beautiful in this. And this is something I would absolutely wear. This is like boot camp training with this shade of green and the brown. And the tall shoes are a great addition to this look, helping her to extend the legs. Although it is just a two piece, but the fact that she added these, that looked naughty. But the fact that she added these pieces around her arms really helped set the looks and connect it together. Next up is Tsunami Muse, and she's looking adorable in this look. We see the denim being reflected and hinted again in this runway. She comes out in the collar and mini tie, with it matching the rest of the outfits from the corset to the dress. Though I would have put the corset on top of the dress, because I feel like if you put the dress on top of the corset, then the corset just seems like an undergarment, so like, why are you wearing undergarments outside? But anyway, this is a very adorable look, and the fact that she was selling it down the runway with the glasses, the pen, the paper, that was fabulous. Great job, Tsunami. Next up is Morphine, serving you denim. And this is a cute look. The hat is great, we see some details at the top. The star earrings really make it edgy. The mini ruffle that we see at the top of the corset, plus the matching bicep pieces. 
Though I would love for her to make the two pieces around her hips a little bit more shaped so that it gives her more of a figure because right now it just seems like a dress that's too short if viewed from far away. It's not until you look up close that you see the full details. But overall, this is a safe look. Next up is Nymphia Wins, and she's making the entire bar scream when she first comes out in this look. Again, she's serving me very cocoly. I don't know if I'm the only one that sees it, but anyway. The hat is so cool. We see all the interesting details that are just blossoming out, and we see at the top and the side of her dress. This color just looks beautiful on her, and she loves herself some yellow, so this is very signature Nymphia. The dress at the bottom, oh, beautiful. This is what I mean when you need more materials. Sometimes when you don't have enough materials, it's gonna look flat, it, there's just no movement down the runway, it gives nothing. But the fact that she added extra material on there, it gives her a beautiful shape. And when she was twirling and walking down that runway stage, it was just so airy. This is fashion, honey. Consider yourself booked for bootleg opinions. Next up is Megami, and maybe I'm the only one, but I feel like this look that she made in the workroom, it's better than the other two that she has brought from home. Maybe she needs new designers. I don't know. This look, I'm fine with it. On a different season, I feel like this look might have been safe, but I feel like everyone on this season has great taste and knows how to sew that this ends up maybe like in the bottom, maybe not bottom two, but like definitely bottom three or four for sure. Also, it's giving me like that poster, we can do it. But yeah, Megami, fire designers. Next up is Plain Jane, and she's serving you realness. Although it is just a two-piece, but the details of this outfit really helped make it seem like it's more than just a two-piece. And she crystallized the bra as well as adding chains to the side of her hips. But I would love for her to add in more shoulder pads, because I feel like they could have come out a little bit more and a little bit higher so that it proportionalize out with the body and her hair. Next up is Plasma, and I like the hair and the makeup. The look, eh. Girl, no. The rule is, you always put the darker color over here, across, vertically, triangularly, however you want, and... This is a mess. I'm not even gonna go into it. You know why. Next up is Maya, and she's serving you punk rock, baby, or as the judges said, Vivian Westwood. Why? Because there's plaids. I kind of like this look. I thought it was a different side of her because we're used to seeing her as a showgirl, um, pageant queen, so this is something different. I don't mind the look. I thought it was very creative. We see the plaid throughout the entire outfit from the top to the front to the back. The shoes helped surf goth and punk in this look. Her adding the safety pin and also the dark makeup really helped connect the look. This is a safe look for Maya. Next up is Hershey. No. No, 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 no. I feel like this is one of the most pedestrian looks that we have seen in a long time on Drag Race. Um, the top... <sighs> the hair... <sighs> the pants... <sighs> the shoes... <sighs> anyway, nothing makes sense here. They just don't match whatsoever. And the fact that she didn't make the pants in the workroom was a disappointment too because this is a sewing challenge. So if you bring something that's already made, it defeats the purpose. So I feel like the only thing that she really made was a top and it doesn't really look that good. And then the heels don't match the look and then the hair was questionable too. Like I know I wear like questionable wigs a lot of the times, but if I say it's questionable, that means it's pretty questionable. So yeah, this is not it for me, unfortunately. Next up is Geneva. And for me, she's serving me something intergalactic, solar system, outer space, ready to drive that rocket ship. I feel like the look is not too shabby. It's a safe look among all the girls, right? I feel like the color combo that she put together with this gray and this shade of blue was just a really weird choice. It kind of washes everything out on her, especially with the gray wig too. Um, what I would have done is to take the waist a little bit higher and also make the pieces over here a little bit bigger too. But, you know, it is what it is. But overall, this is an okay look. And here are my favorite looks for Mother Goose. Significant other, and call me mother. Anyway, it's great chatting about drag race and fashion from my bedroom to yours. Till next time, bye! Hey, squirrel friends, when one video ends, just click on another one. It's called cringe viewing. Go ahead, I support you.